Newspapers versus Cardboard The Ultimate Soil Building Showdown If your soil feels dead, compacted, or, well, just plain hopeless, you're about to learn the simplest zero-cost method to revive it faster than anything you can buy. Today on Soil & Crop Central, we're diving into a soil-building showdown that could completely transform the way you garden forever. No chemicals. No expensive barriers. Just the everyday materials sitting in your recycling bin, yet capable of turning barren ground into living, fertile earth. Why this showdown matters. Most gardeners struggle not because they lack plants, fertilizer, or tools, but because their soil simply isn't alive. Sheet mulching, using newspapers or cardboard, is one of the most powerful ways to rebuild soil biology from the top down. But these two materials behave differently, break down at different speeds, and stimulate the soil in unique ways. Choosing the right one can be the difference between quick success and long-term transformation. The real power behind sheet mulching. From the moment you place paper or cardboard on bare soil, something incredible happens. The soil immediately shifts from harsh, exposed conditions into a dark, moist, insulated environment where worms, fungi, and microbes begin waking up. These materials act as a carbon feast for soil organisms that desperately need structure, fiber, and shelter. As they break down the layers, they release enzymes, organic acids, and nutrient-rich compounds that turn lifeless dirt into humus, the soft, dark, sponge-like material that makes plants explode with growth. The brilliance of this method is that it doesn't just feed plants, it repairs the soil system itself, and that's where the differences between newspaper and cardboard truly matter. Newspapers the fast-acting soil booster. Once newspapers are layered about six to 10 sheets thick and thoroughly soaked with water, usually around one to two gallons per square yard, they form a barrier that blocks light but allows air and moisture to pass straight through. The thin cellulose sheets are easy for microorganisms to digest, which means decomposition begins almost immediately. Within the first few weeks, you'll notice worms tunneling beneath the paper fungal threads weaving across the surface and a gradual softening of the soil below. Newspaper is the go-to choice when your goal is speed. It transforms compacted ground quickly making it ideal for vegetable gardens, annual beds, and any area where you need the soil ready for planting within the next season. Because newspapers break down fast, they work exceptionally well when topped with a thick mulch layer. The mulch traps warmth and moisture, creating a microclimate that boosts microbial life and speeds up the breakdown process even further. In many of my tests, newspaper-based beds became workable and rich in just three months, making it a perfect jumpstart method for new garden spaces. The only drawback is longevity. Newspaper disappears quickly, which means it won't suppress weeds for more than a season. But if your goal is rapid soil recovery, newspaper is unbeatable. Cardboard, the long game soil architect. If you're dealing with stubborn weeds, deeply compacted clay, or neglected land that needs a full reset, cardboard is the patient powerhouse that gets the job done. Its thickness and corrugated layers create a sturdy insulating shield. When soaked with one to two gallons of water per square yard, cardboard settles tightly onto the soil surface and forms a protective canopy that blocks even the most aggressive weeds. The air pockets inside corrugated cardboard lock in moisture during dry spells, creating the perfect environment for worms to thrive. Worms love to work between the cardboard and soil, where humidity and organic matter accumulate. Over the next several months, they drag fragments downward, digesting and dispersing the carbon into deeper layers. Cardboard takes longer to decompose, usually four to six months, but this slow breakdown is exactly what makes it powerful for long-term soil improvement. It gradually softens compacted layers, increases water infiltration, and encourages deeper root systems. 
For no dig gardens, orchards, and perennial beds, nothing maintains soil moisture or suppresses weeds as effectively. The rule of thumb is simple. If you want results that last cardboard is your best friend, just make sure you avoid glossy or coated cardboard because synthetic coatings slow decomposition and can disrupt soil biology. Where the showdown gets interesting. In head-to-head -head trials, newspaper tends to win when speed and microbial action are the priority, while cardboard wins when strength, durability, and moisture conservation matter most. The truth is, both materials shine in different contexts, which means the real magic happens when you combine them. The hybrid method, the best of both worlds. Layering newspaper directly on the soil, followed by a sheet of cardboard and then mulch, creates a layered environment that mimics natural forest floor building. The newspaper activates microorganisms almost instantly, while the cardboard provides long-term structure and moisture retention. This stack produces consistent results across all soil types, from depleted sand to heavy clay. You know, this hybrid approach doesn't just suppress weeds, it actually rebuilds soil architecture from the top down, and as both materials decompose, they feed the soil in waves, newspaper first, cardboard second, creating a nice, sustained release of carbon, humus, and biological activity. So, how do you do it right every single time? Well, you want to start by clearing the area, making sure nothing gets in the way of your materials making full contact with the soil. Next, lay newspaper or cardboard directly on the ground and be sure to overlap all the edges so that, you know, no light can sneak through. Then, soak those layers completely. Don't skimp on the water. After that, add a generous mulch layer of compost, straw, or even grass clippings on top. This keeps everything nice and moist, and really helps keep those materials biologically active. If you're planting right away, just cut holes that are only as big as your seedlings need. But if you're building a new bed, it's a good idea to prepare it a few months early, so decomposition can get a head start before planting season rolls around. From here on out, your main job is simply to keep adding organic matter on top instead of disturbing the soil. Over time, these layers break down and turn into a living, breathing ecosystem right beneath your feet. Now, why does all this matter for every gardener? Well, this whole showdown isn't really about which material is better. It's about knowing how to use each one wisely so you can regenerate soil that'll keep your garden thriving for years to come. When you use newspapers and cardboard the right way, you can turn dead, tired ground into a bed full of life. And honestly, it works faster and more effectively than any synthetic product out there. If you're looking for even more powerful, low-cost soil building strategies like this, go ahead and subscribe to Soil & Crop Central. And hey, don't forget to share this video with fellow gardeners who are ready to grow naturally, sustainably, and, well, just a little bit smarter.